And we're on. Okay, so this is the, uh, the set of topics that will be on the test. Okay, uh, it starts with sequences. Determine whether they converge or diverge. Then we have the sum of some series. We have geometric series, another geometric series, and a telescoping sum. Then we have to state whether the series converges or diverges. You have two answers to each of these questions. A, converges. B, diverges. Then, we have three alternating series, and what you have to do is determine whether the series uh, converges conditionally, converges absolutely, or diverges. Then we had two power series where you have to determine the radius of convergence for each of the two power series. And then you're going to do a McLaurin series for uh, sine or cosine, one of our two alternating series, and do an approximation for the sine of one half by using the first two non-zero terms, and then determine the error in the above approximation. And what that entails is finding the next term. So that's an outline for the test. Now let's go through this. The first one was the nth term of the sequence is n over 2n plus 1. It converges to 1 half. Take the limit as n goes to infinity. As long as the sequence's nth term has a limit, finite and real, the sequence will converge. So this sequence converges to 1 half. This sequence, however, does not. It diverges because it goes negative one half, positive one half, negative one half, positive one half, and there is no limit. This converges to zero because as n goes to infinity, one over ten to the n will clearly go to zero. So that will converge to zero. The geometric series, the ratio r is negative one half. Since its absolute value is less than one, the series will converge. The sum will be a over one minus r. a is one. The r is negative one half. Therefore, the sum is equal to 1 over 3 halves, 1 minus and negative 1 half, or 2 thirds. The fifth one is another geometric series. Uh, if you write out a few terms, start at n equals 0. We'll have 1 plus 0.2 plus 0.2 squared, 0.2 cubed, etc. Geometric series where a is equal to 1, r is equal to 0.2, and the sum is going to equal 1 over 0.8 or 5 fourths when you simplify it. Okay, the next one was a telescoping sum, where we're going to use partial fractions to rewrite this uh, term, these nth terms. Solve for a and b using partial fractions, multiply by n plus 1, let n equal negative 1, negative 1 plus 3 is 2, a is 1 half. Solve for b, multiply by n plus 3, let n equal negative 3, negative 3 plus 1 is negative 2, you get negative 1 half for b. That enables us to rewrite this term as the difference of these two terms. Well, the thing to do here is take the one half out front and then write out a few terms of this difference. Start n at zero. When n starts at zero, you get one minus one third. That's what this is. This one half is from out here. Then when n is one, we get one half minus one fourth. That's this one. When n is two, we get one third minus one fifth. That's this one. The next one, when n is 3, is 1 fourth minus 1 6. It continues in the same manner, okay? What happens is the 1 thirds will cancel, the 1 fourths will cancel, everything cancels in the middle, you'll be left with the 1 and the 1 half from the beginning. At the end, you're going to be left with two terms, but they go to 0 as these number of terms go to infinity. They're irrelevant. The sum of this series is 1 half times the sum of 1 plus 1 half, or 3 fourths. Now, on the series, number 7 is 1 over n. It's a diverging series. It's a harmonic series. The difference in degrees is 1, not sufficient to cause the series to converge. It's a diverging series. Uh, it's a p series where p is equal to 1, which means it diverges. You could prove it with an integral test um, any number of ways, actually. It diverges. Difference in degrees is the bottom line. Difference in degrees is 4, good enough to converge. As long as the difference in degrees is greater than 1, it will converge. Uh, this converges because n factorials increase faster than exponential forms. Uh, as long as this is increasing much faster than this, these terms will go to 0 quickly enough to cause the series to converge. Number 9, converges. 
Number 10, however, diverges because that term does not go to zero as n goes to infinity. It goes to infinity. If the terms are going to go to infinity, the series will diverge. Number 11, 5 to the n is exponential form, n to the fifth is polynomial. Exponential forms increase faster than polynomials. Therefore, these terms are not going to go to zero. They will go to infinity, causing the series to diverge. Number 12. 12, we have n to the 3 halves or n cubed plus 10. The difference in degrees is 3 halves. Good enough to cause the series to converge, as long as the difference in degrees is greater than 1. This series, we have factorials over exponential forms. Factorials increase faster than exponential forms. Therefore, the terms are not going to go to zero. Okay, And that series will diverge. 14. Uh, we have an alternating series. The thing to do is test the positive series first. This positive series, 1 over n squared plus 1, converges. Difference in degrees is 2. Since the positive series converges, the alternating series converges absolutely. 15. The positive series diverges. Okay? Difference of degrees is only one half. But the terms are decreasing, and the nth term is going to zero. That's good enough to cause the alternating series to converge. Therefore, it converges conditionally. Its positive series diverged, but the alternating series converged. And the last one, the nth term is not going to go to zero, causing the series to diverge. The series diverges. 17, you need a radius of convergence for the power series. Uh, generally speaking, the thing to do is to use a ratio test and take the limit of the n plus first term over the nth term. And you'll notice that for any given x, as long as n is going to go to infinity, this will be 0, which is less than 1 for every x. Therefore, the radius of convergence is infinity here converges for all x's. Oh. 18. Uh, 18 is one way to look at this is as a geometric. First thing to do is to move it back so it's centered at 0 instead of 5. That does not change the radius of convergence. And it's easier to analyze. So let's look at this series instead of this series. They have the same radius of convergence. Okay. Well, it's geometric. x over 5 to the n is geometric. In order for this to converge, x has to be between negative 5 and 5, making the radius of convergence have an absolute value less than 1. Therefore, the radius of convergence is 5. That's one way to do it. Generally, though, you want to use a ratio test. And if you use the ratio test, you will see that, yes, indeed, x has to have a value, an absolute value less than 5. So the radius of convergence is 5. 19. We're using uh, sine x, Maclaurin series expansion for sine x. Sine is, is an odd function. Therefore, all the exponents are odd. We're going to use the first two to approximate sine of 1 half. Put a 1 half in here, a 1 half here cubed over 3 factorial. That's 1 eighth over 6. That's 1 48th. The um, estimate for sine of 1 half would be 1 half minus 1 48th, which is 23 48ths. How good an estimate is that? Well, the error, the absolute value of the error is going to be less than or equal to the next term. When x is 1 half, it's 1 half to the fifth over 5 factorial. That's 1 over 32 over 120. That's 1 over 3840, 3840. That's the error. Our approximation is within 1 over 3840 of the exact value of the sine of 1 half. There you go. Okay. Let's 